We are here at the O2 Academy 3 in Birmingham tonight. I'm joined by Ms. Philippa Hanna. Philippa, it's nice to meet you. It's really nice to meet you as well. Welcome back to Birmingham. Good to be here. Never had a bad night in Birmingham, so... That's good. Fingers That's crossed good we'll keep it, keep it going tonight. <laughs> excited <laughs> to be back on tour? Really excited, yeah. I've been kind of doing other things for the last two months. I've been writing my book and I've been doing YouTube and I've been doing various other bits and pieces. So it's nice to be back in front of people. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the first time we've seen you. Oh, um, wow. And to the country community in the UK, you're pretty much a, full, uh, a new name, aren't you? Mm -hmm. um, because this is obviously your first country album. Yeah. So what kind of inspired that transition into the, the world of country? I feel like rather than it being a transition into something, it's more like going back to something because I was raised on country music. My dad's a country singer. So, I mean, he's not strictly a country singer. He was He's country and Irish and a bit of folk and rock and roll, but he raised me on it. And since being a kid, you know, the first song I ever got up on stage to sing was I've Got Spurs, that jingle, jangle, jingle. I don't even know who wrote that, but it was like this little country song. Uh, when I was two years old, got up to sing that. So um, it's just always been there. And when I'm just writing naturally, it seems to be the kind of song that just comes out of me. Yeah, so. I was going to say that. Even listening to your early stuff, there's yeah. still a real country theme there in there. Is, your, yeah. your lyrical style and just everything about it is very, very personal and very country, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, and, and storytelling, which is my favourite thing about country music. Yeah. I mean, you even supported Lionel when he did his country tour, didn't you? So there's a That's bit right, of a link yeah. there. He did his Tuskegee tour, <laughs> which I still can't say years on. <laughs> but yeah, so that was there was a country connection there. And actually, Through the Woods has some country feel on there as well. So it's not complete departure, but this is the first time I kind of really sort of nailed my colours to the mast and said country here we go <laughs> <laughs> we're absolutely loving the album oh, and we love the new you. single as well getting on with life thank is just you. an absolutely stunning track and i love the message behind it as well because it's basically saying don't judge anyone before you know their situation That's right. so kind of what inspired that song and, and where did it come from well about five or six years ago my dad was diagnosed with leukemia and my dad is my hero always has been so it really knocked me hard and even though you know i've got faith and I, you know, I, I don't fear death. I still felt extremely anxious about my dad's health and watching him go downhill was really, really horrible. And I was so on edge. And I was walking through town one day and this lady pushed past me really forcefully and almost knocked me off the curb, just on a rush, and in a rush on her way somewhere. And I just thought she was so rude. And I was just about getting ready to shout at her and you know, call her out for road rage, whatever. And, um, it just, something in my heart just stopped and, and said, but I'm having a hard time, but who knows what she's going through. She could easily be having just as hard a time as me. Maybe she's had a diagnosis. Maybe she's got someone in her family who's unwell, or maybe she's just struggling to make ends meet. There's so much going on in our lives. So it's the song that just says, just stop, really. Just take a moment to think about the fact that there might be a lot going on behind the scenes. Yeah. And in that song, as well as the stuff you do in your Inspiration 365 stuff, which we'll come on to, um, there's a link to mental health, and that's, mm -hmm. I know that's a big thing for you, it's an important thing. Um, is that a difficult thing at times to open up about, or are you kind of proud to be the voice for, for mental health, in a way? I feel like it's easier to open up about when I'm not in a bad place. <laughs> it's harder when you are in a bad place. Because the weirdest thing about mental health issues is they have a way of silencing you. Like, they when you're feeling depressed or anxious or other things like OCD, a lot of people struggle with things like that, anxiety, schizophrenia, the, the list is endless really. When you're having a bad time with that, everything in you says, don't tell someone because they're gonna think you're crazy or they're gonna think you're weak or they're gonna make judgment about you. So I think it's a lot easier when I'm in a good place in my mind because I can just be like, well, yeah, it's just something everyone struggles with at some point. So I think it is important to keep talking about it and reminding yourself that it's it doesn't make you a freak if you have a meltdown or if you need to take time off work or if you need to go see a counsellor, then that just proves that you're human and that you're not afraid to say, I could do with some help. Now, coming back to the album, um, the lead song was Off The Wagon. Mm -hmm. And that's the song that kind of introduced a lot of the country fans in the UK to you. So kind of, why did you choose that one to represent the album and put it out first? It just always makes me smile, always. No matter where I play it, people move, <laughs> they dance, they get involved, they sing it. So I think it's just got that kind of instant fun 
feel. And again, it's called, you know, the hook is keep on driving, keep on driving all the way to beautiful horizons. It's a song about carrying on even when it's hard. So I think it's quite relatable in that sense as well. Yeah. And you also crowdfunded the album, didn't you? Which is unusual. Yeah. So tell us kind of why you went down that path and was it just a lack of patience? Or... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'd been over to Nashville talking to major labels about record deals and, it, you know, in true Nashville style, it, it didn't happen. So I was left with all these songs and uh, just a real sort of strong feeling I should get them out there to people. And I thought the most important thing is that people hear these songs. It doesn't matter how I get there as long as I get there. So we did a crowdfunding campaign and I was humbled to reach the target and, and have people's kind of fan support. Yeah. And what's been lovely about it is you've had the support from Radio 2 and obviously Bob Harris is a big fan. Um, that must be very gratifying to you to know that the same people who supported you before have kind of moved on this journey with you. It's really incredible and I feel like I don't deserve it, to be honest, because, you know, so many people put decades of work into their country music career and maybe don't get that champion. But um, I, I just feel like, although country music is so new to me, I have been working on this now for 20 years, literally 20 years, 21 years actually, 13 years old when I first released a demo and tried to get a deal and here I am, 34, and finally getting radio play. So... I just feel blessed. It's a feeling of like, wow, we did, we actually got there eventually. Um, so I hope that's encouraging for any country singers out there. Don't give up <laughs> because country music likes people of all ages and uh, appreciates good music. Yeah. So just keep keep with it. Well said. Well, let's, let's talk about um, Inspiration365 because mm-hmm. um, I watch it every day. I think it's Do great. You? Yeah, I love it. Oh, amazing. Um, so first of all, tell us where the inspiration came from for that. And secondly, how on earth do you keep coming up with ideas? for every single day? <laughs> it's not easy. Um, well, after I started going on the road and spending a lot of time meeting people, chatting to them about their stories, I enjoyed putting my thoughts on social media, like just Facebook statuses, tweets, and things like that. Just trying to share something that might make someone's day a bit better. And when 2018 came around, I thought, wouldn't it be great to get into the world of YouTube and just see what we can do there and upload something daily so I just thought I'll, I'll give it a go and it's been a real commitment and it's been hard a hard slog <laughs> I don't know how you do it I don't know Where how I'm it? doing it either <laughs> but I feel like my eyes have gotten a lot saggier since <laughs> since the start of the whole thing but I'm just you know pleased to get the good feedback and I think it just means that I'm putting things out there so often that some things are bound to get some traction it's just like a numbers game really so I don't think the Ed Sheeran cover that went viral would ever have happened if I hadn't have said, I need to put something on YouTube every day. Yeah. So again, it's just kind of about consistency, really. Yeah. Let's talk about that Ed Sheeran cover, because that's pretty ridiculous now, how many views that's got. So like 200 countries or something? Yeah, I, I mean, it's crazy. So <laughs> I put it up on Facebook, and within sort of a day, I had a message from Italy. This girl said, congratulations, you've had 200,000 views. And I thought, that can't be right. She must be wrong clicked on it and by the time I'd looked at it it had almost doubled um, and by the next day it had a million views and 200,000 shares and it's just kept going every time I look at it it's gathered more um, I think over half a million people have shared it now yeah. which is Ed must have seen crazy. it at some point sure. I wonder I wonder if he has um, I hope so <laughs> and I hope he takes it as a compliment not you know sabotage that oh, no, it's gorgeous. just to explain for your viewers in case they don't know I took Ed Sheeran's song Perfect and I reworked it as a gospel song um, and it was kind of his lyric that gave me that idea because he talks about being barefoot on the grass and to me it just sounds like barefoot on the cross so I immediately thought that just sounds like an old gospel hymn or something mm. it sounds like a hymn so I thought, well, let's do this. Let's write it. And um, and the response was just crazy. I've had people from all over the world message me. That's incredible. Yeah. It's also had a bit of a knock-on effect for Go Tell the World as well, I think, because a load of people yeah. started watching that now. It's like 40,000 views or something. It's crazy, yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess because people are now looking for what else has she done, the thing I released next got lots of views too. So I guess that's kind of just the magic of, of doing this and hopefully you build things you know you work up towards things yeah tell us about go tell the world because that's it seems like a very special one to you yeah well it was easter just recently and this song is from the point of view of mary magdalene at the tomb of jesus um i just thought she's such an in- interesting character she's mentioned in the bible more than the other disciples no one talks about that and she was the first person to tell people about jesus being you know risen as a woman with a difficult past and i thought 
as a woman with a difficult past, <laughs> that encourages me, encourages me that, you know, we can be asked to do anything, we can serve and do anything. Um, so yeah, I thought that was a good thing to write a story about. So yeah, go tell the world. So what's the plan for the rest of the year for you? I know you're doing Buckle and Boots, which I'm really excited about. Yes, so excited. And also I'm going back out to Nashville to do some more songwriting, connect with people there again. And I'm putting 365 into a book. So by the time we get to January next year, people will be able to read along as well as <laughs> kind of look and watch. We look forward to that. And we look forward to seeing you tonight, Philippa. Thank oh, you for thank giving you. us a few minutes of your time. Appreciate oh, it. Pleasure. And uh, we'll catch up at Buckle and Boots, I'm sure. Awesome. Thanks. Cheers.